Um, so I, I'm Jason Lopetecki. I'm with Arise AI. Uh, we are the leading evaluation and observability company out there. Um, we probably have more and see more uh, LMs in production than most other companies. So a lot of, I think, talk today uh, feels a little high level to me. This is gonna be pretty technical. Um, and uh, we, this, this whole talk is on, on agents, agent evaluation. So uh, how many, so how many of you uh, feel like this, this is kind of the, the year of agents? I, I definitely do myself. You have companies like uh, Laying Chain, Launching Lane Graph, been around a while, but it's, it's probably one of the, 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 the lower level frameworks for agent building. You've got Llama Index with workflows, event-based, we'll talk a bit about that. Uh, Crew AI is a little bit more high level um, in, in terms of agents, and then probably the missing one from this is Autogen. So you've got a whole set of tooling there to, to build agents, and it's powerful by a lot of what you see on the right here, which is which is tool calling. Uh, tool calling is kind of the the core, you know, one of the core pieces to, to building. But we're going to get into a lot more of this. Um, the real question is like, how do you make this stuff work? Uh, and one we have more, probably more customers live with, with either trying to deploy agents, we have a, an agent within our own platform, one of the, I think, the better assistants out there uh, to help you debug AI. And, um, and, and so we have a lot, a lot, a lot of experience in this. Well, what do we see? Well, I think you're gonna see, if you talk about agents, you're gonna see a lot of complicated graphs, you're gonna see a lot of complex stuff out there. Really what we see in all of our customers, they start with something really simple like this. This is a two-stage router and skill architecture. Uh, so so what, what does that mean? You've got an element at the, at the front end determining a user's intent, routing it to a skill that's taken care of by another LLM call. So, like, forget all the, the noise you hear out. Like, this is what I see a lot of people doing. So this is the simplest thing I would try to understand first. There's a router and there's a skill. Um, and then how do you make this, this actually do something? Well, typically you send it back to the router. So, so either there's a user stage in between this um, or you're, you're kind of doing different steps of an agent without a user interaction. But this is probably most of what you see out there architecture-wise. Forget all the complexity people say, forget all the stuff out there, this is, this is probably it. Now, what I'm gonna get into is a little bit more of like, okay, where does this go? How do you debug this? How do you evaluate this uh, from a, a, an LM evals perspective? So, well, there's, there's another level of complexity, I would say, that we also see out there, which is there's not just a router and um, a, a router and, and a skill, but there's a stacking of those together. There's state, typically, where information's passed from one output action to another. But this is probably the core of most agent uh, architectures out there. It's a, a decision of what to go do, it's a, an LLM debugging, and then it's kind of basically state below this. Um, now, this can, so, so there's, there's frameworks that make this, try to make this easier. Um, a lot of what I would see out there is probably agents and code. code. Code is kind of probably the first thing you should start with, maybe not a framework. Um, and, and kind of what, what this looks like, you know, uh, is basically the router is doing tool calls. It's an LLM that's de determining the intent of what the user is trying to do, calling a tool. The tool itself might be uh, a general purpose you know, function or it might be an L, another LLM pass on, the, on, on some set of data. There's some state below that that's feeding in to both the router that's determining what to go call and the tool itself, uh, the skill itself but below that, that tool call. So this is the core you know, a building block that if you're building an agent, you should start with. Um, but you realize, you can realize that getting the tool call right, am I, am I calling the right thing, am I extracting the right data, am I doing the right action below this? Um, and this, uh, this particular example is kind of taken from a chat to purchase where I'm, uh, I, I'm interacting with an e-commerce assistant and just potentially purchasing a product or looking up a product, which we see as a, a, common, uh, a common example out there in the e-commerce world. Um, 
Now the difficulties of, of evaluating this agent. So what you see here is what a lot of teams have, which is a couple lines of code. Uh, seems pretty pretty simple, but an immense amount goes on under the surface. What you have on the the right here is um, is is actually. Our product, uh, we have a, an open source product called Phoenix, uh, one of the more popular open source observability and evaluation software out there. Check it out, to install Arise Phoenix. Uh, but underneath this like three lines of code, you've got probably 100 distributed system calls. Like a couple lines of code, incredible number of calls to different you know, distributed systems. It might be retrieval that you're doing, it might be API calls you're doing, it might be you know, 20 different LLM calls you're doing underneath the surface of these. Um, so the first thing to get a handle of is what in the world's going on in those three lines of code. Uh, so that's, that's, where, you know, that's where Phoenix steps in. It's, I've got, I think we trace 20 different platforms right now from, uh, from, from Autogen to um, the crew to LangGraph, you name it, one line of code, you can see what's going on under the surface. So first off, what's going on? What are these calls actually doing? The next phase is like, how do you run evaluations on top of those? How do I, what are, what are like, is it LM evals? Is it code evals? Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, how to evaluate the effectiveness of, of what you're doing below the surface. So the first thing you need to do, um, and I think most teams need to do, is, is trace their, their agent to understand what it's doing. Um, what might I trace and what, what might I need to understand? Well. Typically, there's a, a router that's kind of doing a, a, a like intent lookup to, to then determine what skill or action to take. And the question is like, did they get that routing right? Did I call the right skill? So there's kind of one thing here is am I routing to the right skill? The second piece is, is the skill doing the right thing? So those are the two different things you might want to evaluate. In this case, I might have a customer asking a question. Um, he might be looking up something to purchase or he might be just asking a general product question. So I'm responding in different ways depending upon what the user is asking to do. And, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, and in, in, in both cases, the example here, I've got an LLM also in the skill itself. So the skill could be a function call, it can be an API call, it doesn't need to be an LLM call, uh, fed back to the router, but typically I'm, I'm doing two LLM calls here, a router and a, a some type of skill. So this is, kind of a, it, this is kind of the simplest form of agent. Now, we'll talk about more complicated ones in, in a bit, but like this is, I would say, 90% of what I see. It can get more complicated. So this is an example of a real production. You know, this is what we see in, in, in some cases from a production perspective. And you can see the branch, basically there's a router at the front. There's a branch to go decide what to do. This is a chat to purchase. I'm talking to e-commerce. I'm, I'm potentially wanting to purchase a product, but I might be doing a product lookup. I might be asking for support on something. There's a lot of things I might be doing when I'm chatting with this assistant. The branches, in the, the little yellow triangles mean LLM calls. You can see some of the branches don't have an LLM call. So I might just be looking up a product, returning something to, to the router stage. And some of these actually have two LLM calls underneath. So I might be doing a lot. So this is, again, in its simplest form, break, I, I, I would say what I see, what architectures I see, is this kind of router kind of skill architecture with, with a loop on it. Um, and, and, and again, we're going to get into how do you evaluate these? How do I know they're doing the right thing? What do I care about? What do our customers care about? Um, but this is kind of what, what it looks like as you're actually deploying one of these uh, a real architecture. Um, and this, this example right here, uh, and, and I say uh, most of our customers are actually doing this in code. Like there's frameworks out there, there's a lot of frameworks. I would say the, you know, you, uh, so, some, some are positive, some have strengths and, and weaknesses, but I would say most people I currently see are actually kind of doing this in, in code that they build versus the frameworks. The frameworks are pretty new. You know, you, you've got to learn the abstractions. So um, I think there's strengths, and then I think there's, you know, actually what I, what I see going on on out there. So um, either one you do, uh, we have tracing options for you and debugging. I, I would say if you're using a framework, you need some tracing options. Um, some of the lower level frameworks that are, are, are pretty new um, out there are going to be 
uh, Lane Graph, which is think of nodes and edges. Uh, Llama Index just launched workflows, which is kind of event-based. Um, has some some advantages, I think, to the way the way you think about things. Um, but these, you can see some of these maybe router stages in the beginning that that spread you out. There's loops here to decide when you come back. So there are different ways of abstracting these kind of branch and flow that you were seeing in the earlier stages. So they're they're abstract. Like if, if I squint at some of our customers, you know, and, and, and our own assistance architectures, I can kind of see the nodes and edges, um, but they're, they're like an abstraction layer on top of, of, of what's there. And I would say Lane Graph is kind of like, you know, maybe Lane Chain started with chains, now they got loops, so let's do a graph. Um, so uh, so an extension of where, where they're gonna go. Um, now, now, the hard thing is not building something that, that you demo on Twitter. It's that, that it happens every day, uh, the hype cycle's big. Um, most of that stuff is just unusable. Unusable in production, not like, and, and the hard part is not making the Twitter demo and making your first POC. The hard thing is actually making something that you're comfortable putting into production, you're comfortable putting into your, in front of your customers, um, and you know it's not gonna go, you know, say that it's not, it's no, you know it's not gonna make up something or, or, or do something that you don't want it to do. Um, so working, so, so I would say the hard thing is not that first POC, the hard thing is actually iterating on this stuff and making it solid. Um, and, and so we'll talk a little bit about like um, what we think you, you need to do that to, to make this stuff work. Um, obviously, I'm gonna give you a plug for what we do, observability and evaluation in the first set here. Uh, but I, I honestly think, I don't know how anyone deploys stuff without tracing. Like, like this, there's just so many things going on in these systems. Um, I, I think it's you know, I, I, I like we couldn't launch and run our assistant without you know our own, our own tools. Um, so first off, it's it's like understanding what's going on on the surface. Um, I would say a lot of it is also starting to build out you know test sets or, or example sets to make sure your the skills you you have are working correctly, and then maybe the question and routing are, are working correctly. So building out little golden data sets that, that you're, you, you want to test it when you make a change. Um, the, the biggest thing we see, the biggest problem is like a, a prompt change just flows through the system in terms of breaks. So uh, because you have LLMs feeding LLMs, like a small change somewhere can, can actually ripple through and in a lot of ways you don't, you don't realize. Um, a change to the router can break your, your uh, extraction, parameter extraction, which breaks your downstream skill. So, uh, so the biggest thing is like, how do I get tests in place um, so that when I, I make a prompt or model change or a new model comes out, um, I kind of have a quick view of what's broken. Um, Another one is breaking down the individual steps. I was saying like, okay, there's a router stage, there's kind of a skill stage. You'll, you'll kind of get at, like like some teams are, you know, the skill's really important. It's important to get right. I, I need some tests on this. Um, and so this is my, my high priority thing I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go like build tests for. Um, some teams, you know, it's, you know, the intent of routing is most important. So I think I think you need to figure out based upon use case what to go build out. Um, and then there's the experiment and iterate and you gotta have tools in place that help you test and, and check your results. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about like what, what you know, what does um, uh, the, an eval look like at, at, the, at the router stage? So, so I don't know, I'm sure you've heard about evals a lot um, and, and I'm, I'm not sure how many, I guess a question for all of you, how many of you have like built a, an evaluation or how many have you heard of evals? I mean, everyone's probably heard of evals, okay. Uh, how many of you built an eval? An eval? Okay, not not that many. Um, wow. Uh, so 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 what, what are evaluations? Are like it's just a fancy industry word for like for for understanding performance or results of what you built. Um, there's kind of two ways that we see out there of doing that. There's kind of um, there, there's the more fancy way, which is actually using an LLM um, to understand whether your LLM returned the right thing. Uh, and and as crazy as it sounds, they're they're, it's, they're actually it's actually pretty useful. Um, so I don't, like we use it in our system all the time. We use it for things that it like, um, just are not, are, are hard to do in code. Um, 
like detecting, like I, I want something just to, you know, I, I want to evaluate whether um, the question was answered correctly. I, I want to evaluate whether, um, you know, the, the right data was returned. I want to evaluate whether I think something's a jailbreak. So, so these are all evals that we constantly run in our system that are LM driven. You also have evals that are kind of code driven. So, um, and you write some Python and it's like, it feels like normal, the fancy word for normal testing. Uh, but the idea is that, that it's either LM eval or code eval, you're checking your system. Um, a natural one for LME vowels is actually the routing stage. So did I route to the right question? Um, it's, it's a really, it's kind of an intelligent thing. You, you want to know, uh, did, did I get that intent routing right? Um, so, and, and then sometimes what you're doing, if you don't get it right, is you're adding instructions to the router. You're saying like, if someone says this, you know, or someone implies this, go here. Um, so you're, you're building out, uh, you're, you're, you're finding problems, you're building out issues. Um, so at, at the router stage, you're typically determining what function to call and what parameters are extracted. Those are the two things that go down to the next stage. Uh, so you're evaluating your parameter extraction, you're evaluating your, your function calling intent. Um, at the, at the skill stage, you might, like if you really have a multi-step router versus just a single step, you might be looking at convergence or, or just purely like if the, the LLM is doing the right thing. Um, so, so typically there's there's a stage, like if the, if the, and I would say most teams aren't doing this iterative thing right now, like it's it's probably like like a user, you know, go back to the user, um, I think Replit just, just launched a, a, you know, one that is iterative but still has a user input, but I would say a lot of, sta a lot of a lot of people I see right now are, you know, user stage in between. But if you are doing this iterative uh, piece, the real question: Are you converging? Am I getting decided? Like most of this stuff doesn't change after a couple of iterations, and you're just off in the weeds. So, so how do you have some checks um, that that determine uh, if the thing's actually doing what you, what you want it to do? So, there's um, you convert. You can do convergence evals, or just an eval for your uh, for for your general skill, or you can do eval at the router. Um, and what they look like, like what does an eval look like? Well, evals, you know, this is a fancy word, it's typically a template. You know, if Phoenix has a bunch, you know, so Arise Phoenix, which is our open source observability and evaluation, all these templates are open, you can use them yourself. Um, and, uh, but, but that template's kind of giving you, it's kind of a classification. It's telling you whether this thing's doing the right thing and you're kind of using this little intelligence layer for classification. Um, that's, that's core of what, what an LM eval is. Um, you can, you know, again, the most popular ones are just did I get the question answered correctly? That, that's, you know, is it, did I, another popular popular one is hallucinations. You'll, you'll, you'll hear hallucination evals a lot, which is, did I add a fact in that wasn't part of the data I'm generating that fact, the information from? So am I inserting facts that, that aren't real? So evals, um, agent evals, and then this, you, you'll get probably router evals, agent evals. And let's see, we're gonna see if this works. Okay, so this is Phoenix. You can download it today. Um, we also have Arise Core, which is our broader enterprise platform, but Phoenix is open source, you can run it. It's it's looking at function calling evals, so it's run here. It's a, it's basically a chat to purchase asking a question, um, and it's asking a question about uh, a, a product and and basically uh, promotion, and it's coming back with product search. So you've kind of gone the wrong branch. I've asked a question about the product promotion, and I've gone down search. Well, typically you'll find a problem. You might want to add it to a data set. So a, a workflow typically is looking at the response of your system. You're finding you know spans. Or issues, you're saving the data sets where you're going to do some tests on, and then experiments are, a, are, are an area, kind of a slightly more advanced area where you're going to test new prompts or test new data, you know, test new models on those examples, and, and then we'll automatically add evals, you can kind of see there on, on the bottom of these, these examples. So um, once again, check out, uh, check out. Arise Phoenix, uh, definitely great uh, from a, a open source perspective. Uh, Arise's core platform enterprise is a little bit broader, wider solution designed for, for enterprise deployments with some of the top teams, uh, top AT, AI teams out there using us, uh, the top AI teams in the world using us. Um, and yeah, and if you're building, you know, one, get your hands, try to build assistants or agents. Uh, try, if you're building anything, definitely trace and, and e eval it and then Definitely try out Phoenix. It's it's there to do. Any any questions?
If you have, have a question, okay. make eye contact with Guy, who's Please. walking around with a microphone. Hi, uh, thank you yeah. so much for a great presentation. I have one question. Uh, what do you mean by parameter extraction? It's just yeah. not the term that I've seen. Yeah, so, so the question was, what, what do I mean by parameter extraction? Well, um, in, in function calling, which is kind of the intent routing of LLMs, there's two main things it does. It determines um, the, function, the function call, which is like the action it thinks you should take, and then it extracts from the data uh, parameters that, that you should use in that function. And so you define as part of your tool calling definition um, what you think you'll need in that next stage. So, so you're kind of defining as part of your branching what you think you need and it will extract it for you. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, this question was Could like, uh, di different agents have different agentic tools, uh, and does, does Phoenix kind of help you find that? I think I'm, I think Phoenix, uh, I, I think you're gonna have to like, like typically you're gonna kind of define what tools you think you need, and then we'll make sure you're kind of calling the right ones and, and or taking the right actions, and, and then we'll make sure it's taking the right steps to do the things, but like you're defining kind of what the things should do, yeah. Thanks so much. Amazing talk. Ali Yusuf from Stanford University. One question is around um, the use of agents in mental health. I think there's a lot of conversational AI is going yep. around. One of the questions is you, th you thought about, you know, there's some things where the router might break or the LLM itself might break. How do you set an ecosystem where you can monitor where the issues of breakup are happening? And if there's LLM, one of the LLMs is going wrong, how do you identify that? Yeah, so, so the question is like, how do you how do you set up an ecosystem whether you're going to catch problems and how do you figure out where, where the problems are? Uh, so I, I do think these the, the platforms like like ours, like our enterprise platform, um, have you know these online evals. So evals that run as your data is ingested and, and augment your data, and you can kind of uh, like that that approach is typically what people are using to like build in checks and they'll they'll check different parts of their system. Um, so you've got like think of it as like AIs monitoring the AI decisions but humans are writing those those checks um, and then you know our, our platform actually does have AI copilot that helps you write the checks themselves too <laughs> so um, we have time for one more question make eye contact with guy where are here. you guy I'm okay. uh, so there's yeah. a question in the back how does your offering like differ from something like Langfuse or Traceloop? Um, like what makes Phoenix different than those offerings? Yeah, good, good. okay, so good, good question. So the, the ecosystem right now is is kind of um, Langfuse, uh, Linksmith, and, and probably probably us, I would say. Uh, Phoenix is, is open source, so Link, Linksmith isn't. So we have kind of an open source offering and one of the, I would say, the top uh, solutions there. I think the developer experience and ease of deployment there is probably better than Langfuse. Langfuse is a little bit thinner but wider product. Um, I think on the enterprise side, uh, Blank Fuse probably doesn't even compete. There's, and I would say on that side, uh, on our main product line in terms of breadth of solution, um, I think the AI integration, so so Copilot AI enablement throughout the platform, no one's even close to, to an assistant like what we have. Um, I would say, um, I think our online evals are, are, are more built out. So so like uh, helping you automate and, and write evals, online code evals. So so I I think there's a breadth of, of solution on the on the Enterprise side that's that's broader, and then we're not just Link. So Link Smith would probably be the closest competitor, but we're not. You, who wants to be tied to your framework? We're open 20 different places. We integrate 20 different frameworks. When the next framework comes along, do you want a, your observability platform tied to your framework? We're open. Uh, the last point I would say is we, you know, we're, we're kind of cloud native, so your data stored in Arrow files, Parquet files, and you can use offline systems with it versus giving all your data to a vendor. Um, so that's that's probably, you know, the, the, hopefully that gives you kind of a, a lay of the land the ecosystem. Cool.